can't race without a pit crew Get the squad ready, picking up these big tools Slap, supposed to help it, then they hit you Just rude, get your shit together We got lots of cars to fix, fool Flat tires, fender benders, some just get fuel Full-blown engine repair, carry it with two Watch for lightning, this dude, he'll rip through Anything you fix, got 40 years to flip through Come along, come along Hello, welcome. Today we are going to be discussing a game called Speed Crew. Warning, I did receive this game for free from the developers. Shout out to them for that. But getting right into it, I have around six hours of gameplay in so far. My guess is you would max out around 10 to 15 if you played through solo and then again with some friends. This title doesn't quite have the replayability that other titles like Played Up and Overcooked have. There is a bit of a story going on here as the game takes place across a few different decades. You get a cutscene every time you finish a section and win the big trophy and then on to the next decade. Nothing really deep there, it just seems like a way to keep you relatively engaged in the different eras. So having drawn the comparison to Played Up and Overcooked, you will see that the theme of this game is very similar. It's a co-op game that is kind of chaotic and you're running around trying to accomplish tasks sometimes with map hazards and sometimes without. One of my biggest complaints about this game is that there is no consistency in that area. One race you get a new tool or a new way to do something, for example you go from using a wrench to take tires off to getting an air hammer, however the next race you could be back to the wrench or have portable gas then be back to the cans and so forth. Usually in games like this once you have reached the next upgrade or the next tool you just have that tool now. The way it bounces back and forth makes it feel super random and way less about progression and more like a disorganized mess. My next problem is some of the hazards. When lightning was introduced I straight up lost the will to play the game. It seems so unnecessary and it happens so frequently and you gotta put these fires out. There was a time I had lightning strike next to a car where I needed to put gas in. I put the fire out, went to get the gas and the lightning hit the same spot on my way back to the car. Again, it feels like an unnecessary hazard just to be like, look, we did another chaotic thing, aren't we so silly? But it doesn't add any fun or engaging challenge to the game at all. Don't get me wrong, the gameplay loop is fun, but it feels like it's missing the soul that makes games like this so enjoyable. I have over a hundred hours and played up and have covered every update for that game, so what this game appears to be attracted me instantly. It's just really lacking that shine, some of which could be changed, like a more linear form of progression, maybe some elements of a roguelike, cards or abilities, something to make you feel like you can play the game a few different ways or adapt differently. If it had some work in this area, it would be a much better experience. Graphically, the game looks good. I dig the art style. I dig the different characters. The level design is something that, again, feels wildly random. The way the maps are laid out changes every race, which is fine, but it just feels super weird that you'll go from dealing with certain stage hazards like oil or fire pits back to no stage hazards, then two races with oil again, and it just feels disjointed. I like the levels, but they should be thought out a little more in terms of what comes after what, because the way it is, the difficulty of each race feels very very random. Sound design is super cool. If you have ever been to an indoor go-karting place, you will immediately recognize the sounds of the tire squealing and the go-kart motors. Some car enthusiasts may be upset that these are race cars and they used go-kart sounds, but I don't mind. I thought it fit the goofy chaotic vibes more than something realistic would have. My honest opinion is that this is a fun game with some great elements that just doesn't quite hit the mark. At a price tag of 20 bucks, I can't say that I fully recommend it. If this is a type of a game that strikes your fancy, I would wishlist it and maybe grab it on a sale. I enjoyed playing it, but again, I didn't pay for it, so it's hard to know how I would feel if I did. It appears that this is the first game this developer has put out, so I think they definitely have a great start. It may sound like I'm shitting on them, but really, I just like to make sure you know what you're getting if you spend your money. That's all I have for today. If you're still here, thanks for watching, and again, big shout out to wild fields for the game and for giving me keys to give to my audience which have all been claimed if you enjoyed this video please drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel thank you again and i hope to see you next time